I'm gonna show you guys how I just made this router base plate jiggy thing. Stay tuned. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the workshop. So glad you could join me today. So in the past few years, I've done a lot of post and beam style structures, mainly pergolas. And in my opinion, I think to really set them off, make them look awesome, and just give them like a real nice professional finish is to cut pockets in the beams where the beams set on the post and two beams come together and join. It just gives it a nice clean look. So to do this, I always took a circular saw, adjusted my depth, and then would make cross cuts about an eighth to a quarter of an inch apart, knock those wedges out, and then use a plane or a, and or a chisel to kind of finish everything up. Now that's okay, but it takes a long time to do that. And time is money, so I tried to just figure out different ways of doing it to make this process faster. So I had a style in mind, but I, I just wanted to see what other people had done. So like a lot of people do, I got on here, YouTube, to see what other people have built, just to see if I could better my design. For the most part, they were all about the same, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and go with this design. But then one day, I stumbled across a video that was on a channel that I'm already subscribed to and thought, well, hey, that's awesome. That makes it a lot easier and a lot more customizable and just kind of cool and versatile. So this design is actually Jesse's from Samurai Carpenter. If you haven't seen any of his stuff, I suggest going to look at it. Just some super sharp projects and cool videos to watch. With that being said, I am altering his design slightly to hopefully make it a little better for me. He used a 12 by 12 sheet of plexiglass, 3 8 inch thick, and I ended up getting a 12 by 24 piece of polycarbonate, 3 8 inch thick. Now, the reason I went with a 12 by 24 is because I think I'm gonna cut it down to 12 by 16, and that's just gonna allow me to bridge over the gap when I'm cutting these big pockets, because you don't want your router to be teeter-tottering and it not have two points of contact because then you start gouging into your wood. The reason I went with a polycarbonate is because one, they didn't have a plexiglass uh, 12 by 24 and it's like 200 million thousand times stronger than tempered steel. Nope, tempered glass. So I figured, well, you know, it's a little bit more expensive, but why not spend the money if it's gone to last longer and be a lot tougher? Now that's about as far as my knowledge goes between plexiglass and polycarbonate. I just know that polycarbonate is way stronger, but for a shop built tool, is it worth it? Will it last longer? I'm not really sure. If you guys know, I would really appreciate it if you comment below and let me know that was a good decision or you wasted $10. So without further ado, let's rip into this thing and get started. Now you may be wondering why I drilled all these holes around the perimeter of this thing. I could have left it as is, and this plate would have provided a very stable base uh, as I'm hogging out all the material, and I could have just clamped blocks on either side of the timber as I'm going, but that's what makes this a jig, and why I like the design so much. Like I said, I mainly wanted to do it for having it in the field. And in the field, you pretty much always wanna have some kind of scrap wood laying around. So all you have to do is kind of guess about how far over you're gonna be cutting. 
screw this one in place and then measure and you can adjust it one way or the other to get it exactly where you need. Screw that one in and if you need one on this side, just measure over and this is more of a guide to keep you from wandering back and forth. And if you're cutting a certain size pocket inside the timber, if you have both of these, you can put them on and work back and forth as you're taking out all the material. Move to the next pocket you need to cut and keep going. You don't have to constantly measure and reclamp blocking on the timber. I don't know if you guys could tell or not, but I was able to hog through two inches of material and it felt like it took a lot less time than if I would have been doing it with the circular saw and coming back and finishing up with the chisel and the plane like I had used to do. Um, I think if you consider, if we have to do a lot of these on the job site on one beam um, or numerous beams, that definitely saves time because if we have to do all the same size pockets, then these are already set up and we can just kind of go to town on them. So huge time saver. And that was probably the biggest thing for me. The second biggest, and I think actually it might be the biggest actually now that I think about it, um, is this huge base plate. Whether I use it as a jig or I'm just free handing, this base plate makes it so stable and you're not rocking. You've got way more surface area than, than this thing. And uh, it's just obviously way more stable. So there's no way you could do it, cut those pockets without this thing because you'd be rocking off the edge of it and that's just not good. So um, I like it. I think it turned out pretty good and it felt good and it's awesome. So. Hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you got some info out of this video. And if you did like the video, throw me a thumbs up, give me a like. And uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing, hit that little bell icon, and then you'll get notifications whenever new videos come out. And you know, share, like, comment, whatever. If you think I could better this, or you have some different ideas, let me know. And like I said, if polycarbonate was just kind of overboard, let me know in the comments below, um, just so I know for future use. So until next time, thanks guys, and take care.